half in the bag. Kiss me, fat boy. me, Mike. Yeah. It's back. Your VCR. From the manufacturer, we had to send it off for repairs. We didn't have the parts? Yes. Yes. You can pick it up anytime. Oh my god, what are you reading? Ugh. I was reading Stephen King's It. I started reading it back when we reviewed the first movie, and now two years later, I've finally finished it. Uh, and, and was it all you hoped for? No! Hello. Spooky clowns scare me! Oh, we just saw It Chapter 2. We did. What did you think, Jay? Uh, how does a movie with absolutely no story end up being three hours long? I don't want to say I hated it, but I did not like it and I wanted to leave. Really? Yes. The weirdest thing to me, it felt like, like there's the first movie and then this is It Chapter 2, but it felt more like just an adaptation of It. Because in the original book, it's bouncing back and forth between the kids and the adults. Yeah. This movie does that and it gives you enough with the kids where you didn't even have to have seen the first movie. Well, that's true, yeah. And I want to ask you something. Sure. I want to see if you notice something. Um, everybody loved the kids in the first movie. I think that's a big part of why it was as popular as it was. Good cast. Yeah. Very good cast. Uh, this movie also has a good cast, although I don't think they gelled as well, but great casting of the adult versions of those kids. Sure. Um, but everybody loved the kids, so they're like, we gotta put the kids in the second movie, too. We gotta bring them all back and, and shoehorn them in and to make the movie even fucking longer. Um, but there's a big difference between a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old. And I'm pretty fucking certain they digitally de-aged these kids. Whoa. And, uh, and, and altered the pitch of their voices. Oh. I noticed it especially with Eddie, the uh, hypochondriac kid. Like, his voice was so uh, distracting to me. What was Because they, they altered it. Someone, someone uh, working in a, in a cubicle, a sea of cubicles, digitally de-aging That was children. 1,500 visual effects artists' job for the last year. Huh. Well, see, you just rewatched. Chapter one, mm -hmm. like so I, I haven't seen it since it came out yeah. in theaters, so I, I, I was not as uh, observant of that as, as you probably were. I, um, I yeah, there, it's an there's interesting thing to many know. shots where the, yeah the voices, especially Eddie and Finn Wolfhard's voice, where it's like they altered that voice. Okay, okay. Eagle Eye J. This is what we do with movies now. We don't just make a movie. We have to throw in all sorts of needless subplots and special effects to justify them. You know, I was thinking about that while watching this because, uh, spoiler alert, not for It Chapter 2, but for our own content. We recently shot a review of Gremlins 2, The New Batch. Yes. And uh, Coming soon. Coming soon. Here's a still. We talked about how that movie is basically, structure-wise, the exact same beats and plot points and then I was, I was watching this and I'm like, yeah, you know, that 30 minute mark's important in movies. Ten, first 10 minutes are important. There's a 30 minute mark. There's, the, there's, there's X. Mm -hmm. Lots of big movies like these kind of movies are just like, like I, like I always say, movies are just going to be carnival rides. Yeah. Where there, there is no like, it's just like this thing happens, this thing happens, this thing happens. Yeah. And the, then the, it kind of ends. The first it was very well structured. It has a moment, uh, the low point at, uh, in the second act where the kids all get into an argument. Yeah. And they all go their separate ways before reuniting for the, for the third act. Mm -hmm. And this movie kind of retcons that, where it's like, oh, when they had that fight, here's flashbacks to them all going off and more spooky things happen that don't forward the story in any way, but we have to have more spooky things. The, yeah. The, the, are you talking about the part where all the adults go off to find their their tokens or their trinkets or whatever. Well, that's, yeah, that's when we get more flashbacks to them when they yeah. when they all broke up as children. Right, right, right. Um, and much like the first one, this felt very, I thought it started off very promising. And yeah, it, they included it a, that scene that's in the book. The, the, the Yeah, the opening scene was pretty brutal. With yes. The, the, uh, I can't remember the kid's name, but yeah, the gay couple. And, right, with the I Love um, Dairy hat, and that's yeah, straight out of the book. Straight out of the book. And that was actually, they throw the bullies, throw them in the water. You see him bobbing up and down. Kind of his point of view, underwater, above water. And then when he comes up one time, you see Pennywise in the distance. It's creepy. 
It's the, the only moment of subtlety in the entire film. The stuff that interests me the least is the spooky clown stuff. Yeah, but well, that's like the first movie, too. I, it was I the least interesting stuff. Yeah, and we'll probably repeat a lot of the things we said in the first review. It's very applicable to this movie. Although there's a lot of great visuals and really kind of neat stuff in this. Um, but I like all the character stuff more. And I wish more that, than the first movie. Well, j I'm just focusing on chapter two right now. Oh. I, I haven't seen the first movie. Oh, you movie. mean the, the character adults in this movie yeah. versus the kid stuff? I in like this the movie. idea of seven people coming back together as adults, yeah. um, and then kind of like how they've grown up and the the love story between Beverly and Ben. See, that felt um, completely abandoned for most of the movie. Well, it, it comes yeah. like at the very end. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying those things are things sure. that I like. I, sure. They weren't developed, yeah. is, but those are the kernels. That's, that's the problem, is yeah. nothing felt developed. They weren't developed because we need scenes with the spooky clown. That's, that's what why. was frustrating. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. It is, started off with promise. I, yeah. I think there's there, it's balanced better in the first movie, where you have some good character stuff, and then a scary scene, yeah. and then some good character stuff. This movie, it was like, good character stuff, spooky stuff happens for two and a half fucking hours, and then we get back to character stuff at the very end. Right. Um, and that stuff felt really underdeveloped as a result of that. Richie Tozier, grown up Finn Wolfhard in this, is Bill Hader, mm -hmm. who's kind of the protagonist. It's supposed to be Bill, but he has the most yeah. to do. He has the most growth in this movie. Yeah. They, yeah. they subtly hint that uh, he's gay and kind of repressing it, and they never go too far with that. It's, it's that, pretty. That's, that, at the end, that's handled very tastefully and well done. Yeah. As opposed to the TV movie, which I, I vaguely recall him just like laying there. He's like, well, guys, he's, I'm gay. No, and, no, you know, that's not in the TV movie. It's not? Uh, Eddie, the hypochondriac, says that he's a virgin. I could never sleep with somebody that I didn't love, and I've never really loved anyone. Is that you guys? Oh, that's it. Yes. It's similar, but. That's right. That's yeah, what yeah. happens. I remember some someone says some kind of secret. Yeah. And they're all like, what? Oh, that's okay. You know, and yeah, they're all like yeah. patting him on the back. Oh, right. What's, is, is that stuff in the book? Not him being gay, no. Okay. And, and uh, Eddie's not a virgin because he's married to a woman that's just like his mother. Right. Um, in this movie and, and in the original book. They yeah. didn't do that in the, in the TV movie. He just still lives with his mom. Um, oh, that's right. so. In this, they have, and that's that was the frustrating thing. They set up all this stuff early on. Uh, Eddie's married to a, a, a you know overbearing, overweight woman that is exactly like right. his mother. And then Beverly marries an abusive man, yeah. like you know, just that, like that her cycle father is, is repeated. Right, and so it's like they set up all these things, and it could be a good story about people kind of as adults uh, confronting their trauma from when they were kids. Uh, but it's not really about that. It's not really about anything in the movie. It's just, I, I hated all the horror stuff in this, and it was more prevalent than the first movie. Hmm. It felt like a like a, like a kitty goosebumps movie. He's on our tail! Go! Go! He's right behind us! I think people like it because, um, uh, it's it's obviously an important <laughs> big horror novel yeah. that was kind of like uh, something different at the time. It, it it is it is a giant cocaine fueled mess. Yeah, so we went over all that. We talked about the first movie, and um, and and I guess this is maybe the closest that they could come to putting it on film. I'd be curious I, I to see know. it as like a TV, like a, a Netflix miniseries or something. Yeah, it'd have to be Longer like, than two right. parts. The uh, the original miniseries was George Romero was attached at one point and it was gonna be like six parts. And then it just kept getting whittled down, whittled down. Yeah. And so George Romero was like, fuck this. And he left and it's two parts. Um, this movie's two parts and has the same thing where the first part is the kids, the second part is the adults. Mm. And in the book, it's more bouncing back and forth between them. And I think that works better because just like the TV movie, this one, the stuff with the adults just isn't as interesting, isolated. Mm. I think cutting back and forth more between the kids and the adults yeah. and their experiences it then. Ties it all together. Yeah, right? I, yeah. Think it, I think it ties it together in a way that uh, neither of the adaptations have. Yeah, I mean, this, this book, you take it and you do it like very faithfully as like a 13-part Netflix thing, yeah, or Amazon thing. Sure. Uh, I mean, because you know, t it's not like not like in the in the '80s when the TV movie looked like junk.
For a while there, the first like, I don't know, hour, there wasn't too much clown stuff or spooky stuff. And I remember like, you know, they, they go to the Chinese restaurant and they're talking and there's a lot of talk and I'm like, oh my gosh, teenagers are gonna be so bored. <laughs> um, and, I'm, and then I then I had this like overwhelming sense of dread that I was gonna have to sit through it's an coming. hour long, <laughs> hour long special effects bonanza at the end in order to make up for yep. the, the effort that you had to sit through of watching people talk. And I'm like, I like the parts where people talk more. Oh yeah. Um, because uh, it's, all it's these actors are great. In this yeah, and, and I I, it's, it's unfortunate it. that in the middle of the movie they all split off, and then we have the same scene over and over, which is one of them goes to a place, mm -hmm. and then spooky thing happens, and they run away from the place. It's very Nightmare on Elm Street-ish, um, except for they just don't die at the end of that scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And which also knocks the it character down a peg. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddy at least offed his victims, which which intensified the the drama and, yeah. the, and the, the fear. I mean, that happens in the first movie too, and it makes sense when they're kids, because the whole idea is that it, you know, he feeds on children, and they taste better the, the more scared they are. Yeah. So it's like he scares them, lets them get away, and maybe he eats them next time. Beep, beep, Richie. So why is he bugging one, the adults? I don't know, because that's what happens. Because Stephen King <laughs> because, is a crazy person. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. I think he knows they're back to get him, so he's... Yeah, you know, like, they're, they're, they're more in the know of his origins and stuff, which they went into a little bit in this. They didn't have space, the... Space alien. They didn't have the space uh, turtle, but they do acknowledge that he's some weird thing from space. <laughs> But it's, it's again, like, how do we justify this being another movie? Uh, everybody goes off and does a thing. I don't know. Things happen. They have to go to their clubhouse that they built when they were kids that was not in the last movie at all. We're just going to put that in here now. Man, you're so filled with hate. I just It just felt like so much filler for not any payoff. I hated, I, I, I'm not going to say that CGI monsters can't be scary, mm. but I'm going to say in this movie, the CGI monsters are not scary. Well, I, I know the conversation that was had at the studio. Here it goes. Okay. Ready? Yeah. In the book, there's a giant spider, but people like the clown. <laughs> a clown spider! <laughs> yeah. That's called compromise. Sure, sure. I would have been okay if like Pennywise went away at that point and they just came up with some really cool design for like an alien spider monster. I think they were worried about repeating the first, the TV movie, because everybody talks well, yeah. about how lame that ending is. That was like, that was like they got Ray Harryhausen <laughs> out of retirement. Hello. Which would be fine if that was like the only big thing, but there's just so many, that Paul Bunyan thing, there's the part where, uh, Bev goes to, to the, her old house, her old apartment. Oh yeah, and, and that's it. the big goofy looking. It's not scary, is it? And I, there were parts where I was wondering if it was supposed to be funny. Oh there's, boy! Oh boy! I mean, some of it's intentionally funny, but then there's a there's the part when Eddie goes down to the basement of the pharmacy. Yes. And there's a bizarre moment when the leper from the last movie shows up again. <laughs> and it starts vomiting on his face. That moment. And I felt like they start playing that Just Call Me Angel in the Morning song as it's vomiting on him yeah, and for just a second. Yes. And I was thinking, I was like, did they shoot this to be scary, realize in editing it wasn't scary, so then they tried to manipulate it to be funny? Just to set it up real quick, because I was baffled too, Eddie is a, a germaphobe, possible victim of Munchausen syndrome by his yes. mother. Um, and so he's all like panicked about everything. And then uh, that they, the leper is in the first one. He, right. uh, the gross, and that's right from the book. Yeah, and then the leper vomits a black sludge all over him. And, and it's this cool shot, it kind of turns. It's and the evil dead. It's a, yeah, and it's just like, and it, it's not funny, but, but it's like a hard edit, almost like music doesn't fade up, it just comes in. It's so Don't weird. Don't call me angel. And then boom, ah. I've, the cut, hard cut, the black sludge, that song. Some it it was like a mistake on the <laughs> editing timeline. It's 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 um it, when you have a, a, a horrific image with with wacky music, or vice versa, it, it produces a laughter. Sure, laughter but then have that song score the whole scene. It was just just that 
five seconds. Yeah. It or, was so weird. Yeah, or you have like, there, there's like a, a radio on the desk that falls over and turns on. Sure. And that song's playing and they all stop, you know, don't call me, and it's playing, and then it's like, oh my God, this horrific yeah. monster's trying to eat us, but this, this song is playing on this radio and it's really awkward for everyone involved. Yeah. Ah, ah, it's trying to get them and the song's playing. That's like, that makes sense. Yes. But it was, it was not a, a diegetic music track. It was part of the soundtrack. Yeah inserted intentionally at a, at a strange moment <laughs> for, I, I assume, a laughter effect. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm wondering is like, was this supposed to be scary? They realized it looks kind of silly. It looks very like Evil Dead 2. So let's just drop the song in. We've got more questions than Prometheus. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned uh, the old lady turns into like a Goosebumps monster. Yeah, I got big googly eyes. And, and it is, yeah, but uh, the creepier stuff is when she peeks around the corner. Oh, yeah, her, her out of focus in, in the yeah. distance. It's great. Uh, same with the, the part with uh, uh, Richie in the park before the giant Paul Bunyan thing comes up. Or maybe it's after that, oh, when yeah. all the people in the background are like frozen. frozen yeah. It's like, oh, these little background things are yeah. creepy. Yeah, and, he, and Pennywise is sitting on the... Paul Bunyan, right? And he yeah, floats off and he floats around, yeah. yeah. And then he's just taunting him. Like, stuff like that. I prefer the simpler kind of horror stuff. There's the uh, dead Stan, uh, his severed head. That turns into turns a Turns into spider. a spider, which is a, a very uh, obvious homage to the thing. It's even like the same shots where it's in silhouette and the spider legs come out and then uh, Richie says, you gotta be fucking kidding me. It's like identical to the thing. You gotta be fucking kidding. And then, of course, it runs around. I, I was so bored during all of it. It's like, yeah. in, like in an action movie when you don't care about anything that's happening and the right. action goes on. Yeah, yeah. It's like Man of Steel. This is like the horror version of Man of Steel for me. Wow. Yeah, not that bad. I didn't, hate it. I didn't hate it as much as Man of Steel, but I was just so bored through yeah. most of it. I desperately wanted more character stuff. Yeah. Um, I wanted that beefed up, but people are going for the thrill ride of... Uh, monsters and spooky clowns and yeah. jump scares. And, and, I and thought that's, the, that's the, the point of it. The first part did a better job of balancing all that stuff. Uh, this movie is like, the things that worked in the first one are lessons, and the things that didn't work are cranked up. I, I like the, the, the premise of an ancient evil that crashed to Earth billions of years ago, that kind of like can change forms and, and feeds on fear. And oh, I think, yeah. Uh, but through, th until the very end, and, and they've ne they never really like solidify that. Like, it, I mean, they do, it's so, everything's so like, like unfocused on, on, on uh, like what, what you should and shouldn't do. It, it, it really likes fear. Yeah. Um, it, it wants to eat children. The, the scene under the, the bleachers with the little girl was a good scene. That was a good scene, yeah. Um, Pennywise was very creepy there, very intimidating, and then he's like one, or three, two, one, and then he's like drooling. Yeah. Um, and I, I, that stuff was really good, and I like the idea that this evil either f just feeds on children and their fears, and um, and it's, all, its weakness is that you you aren't scared. Right. And that's th that's there, but it's not very like like solidified. Like, it just, you know, don't be scared of it. Don't be scared of it. And, it just, and then it goes away. It just sort of, scenes just sort of end. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, okay, we have this spider head that's running around. And then they, they're like, they stab it. Ben stabs it like a hundred times. And then I guess it's dead. But if it just made itself, how did it die? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, and I've always said, like, horror movies really need very, very clear rules so you can relate. Yeah. It's like Pennywise is over here when there's monster and he's making monsters and that. This is, but if, if, if it, they were so, so focused on saying you have to close your eyes and, you know, mentally wipe yourself of fear and then it just shrivels down. That's I, I kind of like the ending when they're just like, they, they realize that, oh, spoilers. Yeah, this whole thing's with spoilers, it's fine. Um, they realize the way to defeat it is to like reverse, to, to not be scared of it. And they yeah. start shouting at it and calling it names and it you know, shrivels up into nothingness. Yeah. I mean, that's, the problem is that's basically what they did at the end of the last movie as well. Welcome to the Losers Club, asshole! Ah! <laughs> Only they didn't kill it in that one. It just sunk into the drain or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, this is just an elaboration on that, but it takes them the whole movie to figure out that that's how you kill it, even though that's what they did when they were kids. Now you're the one who's afraid. Jay, it's what they call a mess. <laughs> okay? It's 
It's a big, loud, spooky mess. Yeah. I do like the running gag, though, of uh, Bill is, of course, a writer, because every Stephen King story has to have a character that's a writer. Uh, the repeated thing of this movie where everyone's saying that his endings suck, because mm. that's the big complaint about Stephen King, is that his endings always suck. And Stephen King has a cameo in this movie, and he says himself that the endings always suck, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is wonderful. That was a nice little, like, because I always remember the Stephen King adaptations from, like, the 80s and 90s. He would always have his little cameo. It was like uh, Stan Lee before Stan Lee. You know, he'd show up in his movie. So it's nice to see him in this again. He's not a very good actor. That's fine. He got run over by a car. <laughs> he, he gets a pass. Yeah. He gets a pass. It's not, it's, no, it's not his performance in Creep Show. No. No, 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 no. Also, additionally, I wanted to say in the first part, chapter one of this, or even in the book, there was this like energy in the town. They're, they're just, they're, they want to keep to themselves and I- ignore the yeah, horrors. Right, yeah, right. That's, that's a part of the original story and the TV movie. I saw Mr. Ross across the street. He looked so concerned. I thought he was going to help me, but I couldn't believe it. He, he just turned around and went inside. And kind of the first part of it, it chapter one. The blood, it, it, it's... What blood? But that's completely abandoned in this movie. Uh-huh. There's no citizens of Derry in this movie. All the streets are empty. They're at that hotel. Nobody's working there. It's like, where is everybody? There's some people at that uh, carnival. Some people at the carnival, some people at the Chinese restaurant, I guess. Yeah. But The people at the Chinese restaurant who, if someone was smashing a table with a chair, <laughs> that, that was a very private room that they had at that Chinese restaurant. <laughs> Because you see people through the, like, the, the window, the yeah. wood slats, and they're just like extras like doing the extra thing. And they're like, wouldn't the whole restaurant no, Nobody notices? Stop? <laughs> yeah. Also, in that scene, we were talking about sound editing. Um, and that uh, you're talking about the song that awkwardly played. There is a part where I think it's McAvoy and Chastain. They kind of, you know, that's a table of the six characters. They kind of focus on them. And everybody else is there, their soft focus, and there's looping audio of them like chit chatting. Yeah. And and it's it's very badly mixed. It's it's like um, uh, you know clearly you're supposed to focus on those characters and r- r- the the other characters are chit chatting, right? And it's like their volume just drops dramatically, and obviously so we're supposed to focus on that i get that sure but it and you hear like bill Hader talking and he's like yeah something about something something and then the camera's kind of and then you see bill Hader and he's not talking i noticed that yeah okay <laughs> as, it was very as, confusing as film editors ourselves <laughs> uh, we, we we tend to notice things like that and i was like uh, and it was like just two characters talking yeah and it was like whoa oh, oh, oh. All the things you should be focusing on on a movie. Yeah. Well, we're we're weirdos, you know. We're, I don't I, I don't focus on that stuff if I'm engaged by a story. I don't even think about those things. But that's true. When you're bored, your mind wanders that's to true. the details. I craved you. I missed you. This movie felt it was weird because it felt overstuffed, but also underdeveloped. I I don't know. I. <laughs> But this was so changed from the book. That's the thing. There's so much from, uh, in matter. this that isn't in the book. Jay. And there's the stuff that's in the book that clown. they- Clown. Spooky clown. Spooky clown scare you. Get your popcorn, watch, and leave. Why are you still talking? <laughs> that's all you need to know. But if that's the case, why even put it in the movie? Like Bill having a wife. She has much of a larger role in the original story. She's in one scene in this at the very beginning, never brought up again, doesn't show up at the end. Uh, they bring uh, the bully back, you know, Pennywise Who doesn't breaks talk. him out of his insane asylum with the help of a corpse. Is this real? What's happening? Uh, he has a bigger role in the story, and here he just kind of vanishes from the movie. He gets murdered. They kill him, and oh, he's gone. No, nothing to do with anything. Yeah, almost a Native American ax. Yeah. Head. But why is he even there? Like Pennywise needs his help to stab people because Pennywise can't do can't it. do it himself. I don't know. In the original story, it's like he takes one of them out. I want to say it's Mike. 
Um, and so Mike can't go down into the sewers with them, so it's like they're not as strong because oh, they're right. not all together. But here they all go down to the sewer, so it doesn't matter. It's just like a gigantic waste of time, <laughs> even putting that character in the movie. Well, your number one priority is spooky clown scene. And, and that's, that's what you build, uh, that's your framework. It's, I guess not, it's it, not a plot, it's spooky clown scenes. And you have to have them strategically placed throughout the running time. Yeah. And then you say, how do we fill this gap between these two <laughs> spooky clown scenes? Well, how about this, this scene from the book? Yeah. That'll be kind of easy to shoot. <laughs> what, do we, what do we put over here? I don't know. You know, uh, ah, it's, it's a mess. Uh, this book is a, is a mess. Yeah. It has great ideas. Uh, it has 38 different great ideas that are all not developed into perfect ideas. I don't know. I think the bigger issue is that the movie's just not scary at all. It's it, it's jump scary. It's it's scary to you know your teenager eating popcorn. I guess because it, there's creepy there's creepy imagery every so often and there's it's it's the jump scare version of scares. You you want that overarching dreadful terrifying horror movie yeah. that has deeper implications. Well, I think, I also think it's just that and, like, yeah. scares are like horror films, what makes things scary is like an intimacy mm -hmm. and uh, like it, doing like epic horror like this, yeah. where it's like, like an Avengers movie, but for horror, like, I don't know, it right. just it doesn't work for me. I know a lot of people love the first movie and I like a lot of stuff in the first movie, yeah. but this one was like all the worst things about that one just, just escalated. That's, for, that's was, a fair critique. A, I, I found it boring and exhausting at the same time. We need to finish it. For good. That's a, Speaking of ADR, there was another thing when the bully shows up in Eddie's bathroom and like stabs him through the cheek. Mm. And then Eddie's hiding in the, the shower, stabs him. As Eddie's leaving, it's like they ADR'd a line where he makes fun of the bully still having a mullet. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, he's like yelling it as he leaves the bathroom and it was incredibly awkward. And that was another moment, like the vomiting thing, where I was like, did they do that in editing to try and make it funny because it wasn't scary? Well, that's, yeah. Yeah, maybe they like, you know, a test audience said like, oh, that part was weird. It was, there was a lot of, or just a screening of people said, eh, it's a little weird. He's just standing there. You should say something to him. He should make a, like a, a funny Marvel-esque joke at the end of your horror scene. Cut your mullet off. I don't know. Can you imagine like a test audience today, like a modern audience, they go they go to an advanced test screening of like The Shining? What a fucking nightmare that would be. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so boring. Just keeps typing that one sentence over and over again. <laughs> what kind of book is that going to be? Oh no, 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 that's cuz he's crazy. He should be typing that, some kind of poem. That's what they say. Maybe we can ADR Shelley Duvall saying, "Oh my god, you've gone crazy." so that they understand what's happening in the yes. film. Jack Nicholson's performance did not indicate that- He's way too that, subtle that in that he, film. He had some kind of problem mentally. <laughs> <laughs> if there's 50 scary moments in this movie, there's 12 to 17 uh, ones that really worked. Uh, little Girl Under the Bleachers, um, Bev getting tea from the old lady. There's a couple of them, and then there's ones that just took it too far. Yeah. Paul Bunyan, and nah, big, nah, and then the ending with the spider, and nah. But then it's like, ah, it kind of works. It was, to, to me, it, it was like this. Look, <laughs> look at a stock market graph. Just <laughs> up and down, up and down, up and down. It wasn't like, like this just, just this decline of like, oh God, when does this end? It was like a like a hospital monitor, like heartbeats. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just hanging in there sure. and, until the end. And then as a whole, looking back at it, um, then just going, what a big, big mess. It consumes us from the inside until we don't have a choice anymore. I'm done talking about this film. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Mike, would you recommend? Uh, it chapter two. Mm. <sighs> well, I just burned out. Oh. I, uh, I, I, uh, I would, I, I think. It's dull, it's, uh, it's dull to you. You have a different sense of horror. 
I think even as far as, because I like some of the bigger, like I like the Insidious movies because they're like inventive. And you I always like bring the, that up. You I like the characters. Up. I like some of, like I like the Conjuring stuff just fine. Le- less less big, uh, big horror set pieces and more character stuff. I know you are more of a Black Coat's Daughter kind of horror yeah. guy. Um, Have you seen the trailer for his new movie? No. Oz Perkins? No. Oddly enough, the girl who played Little Bev from It is in it. Oh. It looks great. What's it called? It's called Gretel and Hansel. Oh, is it what I think it's about? Yep. Okay, all right. You know who plays the witch? Brie Larson? So, I don't know. I'm kind of like on the fence on a recommendation, I'd say. And you, you say no. I'm going to say no. And I, I've actually grown to like part one more because I was kind of like m- mixed on that when we first reviewed it. The stuff I like about it, I've grown to kind of, is outweighed the negative for me. So I was kind of mildly looking forward to this one, but... If it were half the length, maybe that would help a lot. It's just filled with so much extra junk. Yeah. But uh, no. This feels like the extended version that they re-release in theaters a yeah, month later yeah. for more cash. The Midsummer director's cut that recently came out. I don't want to watch more of that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyways. I have some more phone calls to make. Okay, I'm gonna start reading it again. I'm starting over from the beginning. I'll see you again in three years. See if there's anything you missed. Yeah. Hello. It's Mike. Yeah. It's back. Yeah, the monster from space that eats children. Yeah, it's back. We, We have to go down into the sewers and then find where its spaceship crashed and perform a Native American ritual that doesn't work and then yell at it until we rip its beating heart out and squeeze it. Yeah, yeah. Can you do next week? Next two Thursdays from now, okay. All right, bring some flashlights.